Now we get to put all that stuff together in one project. This is a project for Mr. Known Worldwide out in old California, a friend that I met on the internet, so he's not a 60 year old man trying to catfish me. So I got a little sketchy doodle of our project. My go-go juice here. Let's go. As we're creating this sketch, keep in mind that I'm only using the things from episodes one through four, which goes to prove my point that you don't need all this vast knowledge of all the nuances of all the tools to create something that's useful in the real world. Sometimes, just what you need to know right now is all you need to know. And if you like that kind of thing, consider showing me that you do like it by clicking the like button. Shameless plug, but it does help me out a lot. And it lets me know that what I'm doing is providing you some kind of value. And all we have to do is extrude this 20.125. Extrude this profile 20.125. And there we go. So do you remember early on when I kept arguing for the fact that you don't have to worry about which plane you choose and all of that stuff? At least for right now, the only thing that is really going to affect is how you navigate around. And if you notice that your navigation and orbiting and all that stuff is getting funky, probably because of how you have it set up. So right now it thinks that this is the right hand side, this is the top, and it's just weird and awkward to try and orbit around. It's not working for me. So I'm gonna right click this, go to set current view as Let's just call this front. Go back to front. That was weird. Go back to the front view. Rotate it around with that little arrow there. Right click. Set current view as top. And when I try to orbit around, it's much more natural. So we got the majority of this shape and the rest of it is just going to be detail things. So recall from the past episodes, you can sketch on any flat surface. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick this right here and I'm going to draw the little arrow. I don't have a size for that, but uh, I guess it's not imperative that it's perfect. Let me sketch a reference line that gives me a perfect center. Coincidence, meaning glue this point to this line. We'll go into constraints later on. We touched on it very early on, but we'll come back to that. So this might be a little bit wide Call this five. Again, this is just those little detail things. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it looks pretty close. Negative 0.5 N. Just using extrude. And we have the arrow. So this is a weird face. You can see it's at an angle, but like I said, any flat surface, no matter which orientation angle or whatever, you can sketch on that thing. So let's just click this, create a new sketch on it. Center line here and here. I'm going to select this one, hold shift, click that one to multi-select, then do both of them at the same time as construction lines. And the only things that's going on right here is just like little grooved sections in a rectangle type pattern. So I'm gonna go to rectangle, I'm gonna go to the center rectangle, Let's fill at this edge a little bit. Finish that sketch. Extrude this profile in just a little bit. Let's call it negative 0.5 just to, that seemed like good enough. And inside of this thing, we're gonna create little ribs. Referring to the image, and I'll put it on the screen. This little inset section that we just did appears to be just a little bit bigger. Parametric modeling. So let's go back to this sketch. Let's make this 16. That looks to be a little better. Finish that sketch, and you see because of parametric modeling, it carries all those changes downstream. We need to put those little grip pieces in there. There's six of them. I'm just gonna sketch a line going down. And I'm going to make these, I don't know, 0.5 seems to be good. And let me make this 0.5 away from this. So we have one rib. There are better ways to do this, we're just not there yet. Okay, so when I put that one right on the center, you see this little triangle here, and if we refer back to what this is, it is a midpoint constraint. 
And when we try to dimension this thing, let's see, we get an error that says this is over constrained. Well, when we put that line on here, it automatically snapped basically to the center point of this rectangle that we're drawing inside of. And because of that, you can see the constraint that shows up here. Now we can't set that dimension. It is constrained right now at the center. To do away with that, we can click this and delete it. Click this constraint and delete it. And now we have free reign to do whatever we want with this. But just know that if you get that over constrained error, just look at the constraint glyphs or icons that show up around your sketches. Last one. All right, we're off by one. Let's go back to the original sketch here. And we're at six. We need to make it 6.5. So you can see that because, again, of parametric modeling, just auto updated everything downstream. So we're going to click back on the sketch that we were just working on, and we're going to add in one more line. Now let's see what we got. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have an empty space on the beginning and the end. So that is exactly what we needed. So now let's click all of these. Let's just bring them right up to 0.5. Joins fine, and we have those little ribbed sections. Other than finishing it up with like fillets and chamfers or anything like that, the only thing that we actually need to add that we're missing right now is the hole on the bottom where it screws down onto a rod that comes up through the door. It's a door lock, so it's got to operate, of course. All I'm going to do is undersize this slightly. Click on the bottom, create a new sketch. Again, just do a center line. I'm going to make these construction lines, and I'm going to make a circle. The diameter total was about 4.5, so I'm going to call it 4.3 millimeters just to undersize it a little bit. And the depth, let's call it 15 to be on the safe side. We just got to finish it off with some of the modifiers that we talked about already, which are the fillet and chamfer. I don't have this thing sitting right in front of me, so I'm having to sort of extrapolate and pull from the images that I do have to work with. And sometimes that's all you get, and that's totally okay. This is a 3D printed object. It most likely will be sanded down and painted and finished anyway. And because of that, a little fine tuning here and there after it's printed is totally normal and totally okay. All right, so we've got the model here. But one thing that I noticed based on the reference image that this is a little bit more rounded over. If you've paid attention so far, you've noticed that fillet can be found under the sketch environment and right here under modify. Full transparency, I typically don't use fillet in my sketches, but I did want to show you that it does exist in both places, that it can be useful and all these things. I just typically don't do that. So I'm going to go back and undo this fillet in the sketch itself so I can add a fillet right here that is more like what it's supposed to be. So let's go back to the original sketch. That's all the way back here at the beginning. So you get to see parametric modeling from the very start and how it affects everything downstream of it. So how we can go about doing this is we can trim this here, here, and even here. We'll go to extend, and all it does is extend a line into an intersection. This is pretty much it. I'm going to finish that. But you can see that it did auto update everything right through here. Now I'm going to go before you've done this before in the other episodes, this fillet right here, which is those ones, and we'll go to this one, and that's that one right there. And I'm going to right click it, and I'm going to delete that particular feature. Not everything after it, just that particular one. So I'm going to delete this too, just because, just to clean everything up a little bit. Here is where I want to add this fillet, probably, in time. So I'm going to do this. And I don't know what this should be, but let's just go two. Two two's good. Two's good. All right. Now we're going to fillet this portion right here and this right here. And because this is nice and curvy and flows nicely, a fillet will go all the way around it. And it's called um, tangent chain. And all it just means is if there's tangency between the lines that are connecting, that you're going to fill it it'll think that you want to fill out that entire thing. And if you don't, you can uncheck it over here. We'll go into that later on, but just know that that's what that means. 2.2. That's a lot closer to the actual image that I got. There we go. We'll commit that. And you can see that we still don't have the chamfer that we put here. So we're just going to roll the timeline forward with that to update that. And there it is. And we're going to add that chamfer right back down here. 
there we go. That's what it looks like. Looks pretty good. So let's go back to our design environment here. And I'm going to show you how to save this file out. This is not something that really warrants its own episode. It's pretty simple to do. All you've got to do, right click that thing and click Save as Mesh. And the file format that you want is just STLASCII. And then save it somewhere where you can find it. Now, I'm going to 3D print it. Then we're going to package it up and ship it off to California. That is the piece. I'm going to link where this is going down below so you can check out his YouTube channel. But once he gets it, hopefully it works out for him. And if you wanted to, you could always sand this down and paint it with just any old plastic spray paint like you would normally and have something that looks pretty close to factory. So the reason that I'm even taking the time out to put this kind of thing on an automotive channel is really because of what this implies. Recreating parts that are hard to find, that are super expensive. This implies unlimited possibilities for customization. There are so many things that having this knowledge can unlock for those people in the automotive world that literally is going underserved relatively inexpensively. You can do this for yourself or you can have it done for you. If you like this kind of thing, please like the video and tell me down below what is something that you would like to do with a 3D printer because maybe that's something that I can include here on the channel. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because this is going to be an ongoing series where we're going to build on a lot more of this stuff to culminate in a lot of cool projects, hopefully. But of course, selfishly, all three of those things really help nobodies like me here on YouTube grow. With that said, we're going to be moving officially into level two, and that's going to do it for this episode. So I'll see you all later. Bye. 3D printer back here. Printer Runski? Printer 3D printer? We're going to turn this into a real thing on the 3D printer, uh, a Bobby.